we looked after your ancestors when they arrived on our shores. The only reason our people start getting sick is because your ancestors start giving rot diseases with us and gave us blankets that were infested with smallpox. We were looking after our people, and we can still do that, and I'm glad that this court is reaffirming that. I'm Brian Lilly. Welcome back to Byline. That is the sad scene outside of a Brantford, Ontario courtroom today where Chief saying, you know, pushing on exaggerated and false stories about smallpox blankets after a precedent-setting case where an Ontario court struck down a challenge by McMaster Children's Hospital to force a First Nations girl into chemotherapy. The judge rules the family is entitled to rely on traditional medicine to treat her cancer. Paul Cooper is a family lawyer. He joins us now from Toronto. Uh, Paul, this is, um, this is a, a tricky one for me because I am an advocate of parents' rights. I am not a big fan of the state intervening where they shouldn't. But in this case, we'll read from the, the judge's decision in a moment, but this appears to be a case where the, the courts are saying, coming to their conclusion based on something that wouldn't apply to the rest of the, the non-native population. That's correct. Um, <clears throat> a case like this, I think in, in almost any other circumstance, if it's dealing with uh, religious rights and parents' rights in that context, I think any court that I've ever experienced would likely order that the Children's Aid or, or Native Family and Child Services would have a right to intervene either by apprehending a child or by placing a supervision order and having the right to make those medical decisions. Now, um, this, this is a child that has leukemia and while you know all of us have experienced someone who has uh, dealt with cancer, we know that chemotherapy can be a very draining, very uh, strenuous ordeal it is a 90, 95% survival rate for leukemia with chemotherapy, but the judge said, this is Justice Geethan Edward wrote, physicians want to impose our, if we can bring up that, uh, that quote board there, physicians want to impose our worldview on First Nations culture, and goes on in the ruling to write, are we to second guess her and say, you know what, we don't care. Maybe First Nations culture doesn't require every child to be treated with chemotherapy, and to survive for that culture to have value. That's an odd decision. And you mentioned religious uh, um, uh, values, Paul. A Jehovah's Witness case with blood transfusion. Those kids are taken all the time, and judges don't write like that. Why the difference here? Well, Aboriginal culture is treated differently in the Constitution. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not an expert on Aboriginal culture. I can say that the best interest of the child is what prevails in family court. That's what the, the, the determining factor is. In this case, it's clear that a child with this leukemia is almost certainly not going to survive without chemotherapy. That's what the doctors are saying. In cases where children are, ta are either apprehended or are treated, and a court orders the state to provide the treatment, they do a balancing test to determine whether it's more probable than not that the proposed treatment is likely to succeed where the alternative won't. In this, we know in the long term the alternative will not succeed. So, so essentially what's happening here, um, for right or for wrong, um, is Aboriginal culture and maintaining that tradition is being given a higher um, importance than the best interest of the child. And in this case, what is probably going to be the child surviving. All right. This is, uh, as you say, it's being treated as uh, a victory for First Nations culture. I want to play another clip from outside the courtroom earlier today. It just reaffirms our right to be able to practice our medicines and our traditions in our own way and to treat our people in the traditional way without interference from outside governments that, that perpetuate that they have the right way to deal with First Nations and their health. This reaffirms our right to be able to treat our people the way we want. Yep. Paul, you know, some people will say I shouldn't be pointing things like this out, but I do notice that f both First Nations leaders wearing glasses. That's not part of First Nations tradition, but they're both wearing glasses to deal with their eyesight. They're both wearing uh, what some of them would say, oh, you're wearing white man's clothing. So it's, you know, this is not a case where some, th th this is, Six Nations is not a reserve that has been cut off and we're going in and trying to impose. Six Nations has been part of Canadian culture since the Mohawks moved there from New York State in the 1700s. Uh, it's just a bizarre ruling all around to me. I, I agree. I, I agree that this is a victory for First Nations and, if, and in terms of the Constitution and the protections in the Constitution for Aboriginal culture, it's the right decision. Um, in that regard, when it comes to the best interests of the child, it's absolutely not the right decision. There 
if, if this decision were to have a broad effect on Aboriginal society, then every Aboriginal child that has terminal leukemia, otherwise not treated properly, will die of this disease. And then we're going to have an epidemic of children dying of an otherwise treatable disease in order to preserve um, the, cultural, the cultural link. So it, it, it's, it's, it's not a family yeah. court matter in my mind. This is, this is definitely more of a constitutional matter. Uh, in family court, this child would be treated one way or another. And it's my personal opinion, this child should be treated. The child is only 11 years old and deserves to be treated and to survive a treatable cancer. Yeah, if this were an untreatable cancer, and you know, we've seen, I'm sure you've seen people I have where whether they go through the treatment or not, they're going to die in fairly short order. I can understand withdrawing treatment, but not when it's uh, so treatable. But Paul Cooper, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. All right.